Hey everyone, Hardly Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today and over the next several videos, we're going to be working on a new uh, system. We're going to be working on a game clock that is going to be tied into a day-night cycle. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Uh, from there, we're going to be uh, talking about coroutines. And then we're going to create a event system that we'll be using th throughout the rest of the project. Um, so hopefully you stick around for all the videos. Uh, in, the in this first video, we're going to talk about creating a coroutine to handle our uh, game clock or in-game time. And then in the next video, we'll slowly add more functionality to it. And then, like, like I said, then we'll work on creating an event system. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. I'm in the project, the same before. Here in the project window, I have gone ahead and created a game time folder. I'm going to go ahead and create a script now called, uh, we'll call it game time manager like that and in the hierarchy here in the scene view I'm gonna create an empty object I'm gonna reset its position using this little gearbox and hitting reset and I'm gonna call it game time manager uh, I can be whatever you want I like using game I like using the uh, manager tag here or keyword it's just a personal preference but you can name whatever you want I'm gonna drag this script on top of game time manager like so and then I'm gonna drag game time manager into our prefabs folder so I have a prefab of it of it. Uh, so next what we're going to do is open that up into Visual Studio and I'm going to zoom in for us a bit so we can uh, get some work done. So first off I'm going to delete the void update and void start function for now. Uh, we're not going to be using them just yet uh, and then I'll go ahead and talk about a the the coroutine and why we're going to use a coroutine. So basically um, I decided to use a coroutine for the game clock because it allows uh, a way for me to pause it and to manipulate the time a lot easier or more easily than using the uh, update function. Also, the update function provide uh, it gets updated every single frame. So if you have a game that's running at 130 frames per second or 120, 60 frames, that means that chunk of code on this class is going to run. 60 times per second and for a game clock at least in my project we don't I don't need that accuracy I don't need that uh, I don't need such fine amount of time uh, and you might have seen tutorials where you see people doing void update I'll just write it out real quick void update they create some float variables so they call it let's call float time is equal to 100 right and then they and then in the update function they do if time uh, is less than excuse me, is greater than or equal to zero, greater than zero, they'll do this where they do time minus equals uh, time dot delta time, uh, but which basically this thing subtracts uh, the time elapsed between each frame from our variable time and it ends up being about seconds. Uh, but I don't want to use, like I said, I'm trying to avoid using the update function. It's unnecessary for this uh, for this purpose, so we can use a coroutine which runs uh, basically alongside everything else, and we're only going to be updating that set of code every one second with the way this will work. So, the way we're going to do that is going to be first creating a public integer. Uh, so, public int, and we're going to call this game day length uh, and minutes. So, this will be set in the inspector. You can set it how, uh, however long you want it. I'm going to create a private variable here. It's going to be a type int, and it's going to be game day length uh, seconds. So whatever we're going to just convert whatever you put in here for minutes, because it's easier to determine a, a <clears throat> length of time in minutes versus seconds uh, for most people. So we'll do game length seconds, and we'll set this in a function called void on enable, which is a mono behavior uh, method. So basically, when the game object is set true, it's turned on, it's set active. Uh, then this method will run. It allows us a little bit more control so when I hit the start button everything just doesn't go. It's when I turn on the object so we can use it uh, more efficiently later on. But the first thing we need to do is convert our minutes to seconds. So we do game length seconds is equal to uh, game day length minutes times uh, 60. Right. So if I have one second or one minute, excuse me, we'll have 60 seconds. One times 60. Pretty easy. Uh, and then now we're going to actually create the coroutine, and the coroutine is uh, pretty simple. Um, it just takes some practice playing around with it, and um, 
learning to uh, not use infinite loops that crash Unity. But basically, this is the general structure of what a coroutine would be. So here we have, we're going to make it private. It can be public. It's up to you. Uh, but we're going to make one private. It's The return type is IE numerator. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, you can, it's an interface. You can look, look that up on, uh, on Unity's uh, online help and uh, or the Unity reference to all the their code. Anyways, we're going to be a private IE numerator and Windows also or Microsoft also has a reference to it for C sharp. But anyways, it's a private IE numerator and we're going to call it game clock. So this is the name of it. So it's the same setup as a function or a normal method here. And uh, then the type it return the way you return the the IE numerator is you type in yield return and then you have several options the most basic is returning no nothing so what it will do is it'll come in here and say oh we're not returning anything and then the numerator the I or the coroutine excuse me is done it's over at that point um, and the way you call it is just by doing a start coroutine so we're gonna start the coroutine after we calculate the day the game day length in seconds so we'll start the coroutine you just call it um, within the, the parentheses. So start coroutine, game clock, and then your parentheses. Don't forget your semicolon. So this starts the routine. Uh, and then this is the, let's say, basic setup of a coroutine. If I can spell. All right, there we go. So now you might be asking, well, how are we going to create our game clock with this, this re yield return null? And it's actually pretty simple. We're going to create a couple variables, uh, just three right now. And they're going to be private. One's going to be int. It's going to be the, our current game time. We're going to create a private bool. And it's going to be called is running. And we're going to set it equal to true. And we'll create a private bool is uh, day over. And we'll set that equal to false. And actually, we'll go ahead and set is running. I oh, will set it to true for now, and we'll in the next video we'll talk a little bit more about that. But we'll set it equal is running to true, is day over to false, and then come back down to our uh, coroutine here, and we're going to create a while loop. And in the while loop, we're going to be checking to see if is running is true. So is if while loop is running, that means if this is true, is if running is true, this while loop will continue to run forever, right? So it's kind of like an infinite loop, but we have a way to get out of it because we have this private variable is running, uh, which makes Unity very happy. So now what we're going to check, or now the first thing we need to do is when we're running, we need to increment our game clock. Game clock. So we do current game time plus plus, so that increments it by one, and then we need to do a check. So after we increment our current game time by one, we need to say, hey is current game time greater than or equal to our uh, start time or our game day length in seconds so we do game day length in seconds if this is true then our game day is over day is over so we can say uh, is day over is equal to true and we can debug a statement with a debug.log uh, day is over. Otherwise, if this isn't true, then we want to yield return, and there's another method we can call, or another way to return. It's called yield return new, and we're going to wait for a certain amount of seconds. So wait for seconds. Uh, this takes a float value of seconds, it, so it could be a half a second, it can be five milliseconds, it's up to you, but we're going to do 1F, which is just one one second. I'm going to delete this yield return null because we don't need that now. Uh, and I'll explain what's happening. Oh, actually, I actually want to add one more statement here so that we can so I can test it. We'll do a debug log and we'll say current oh, current game time. And we'll use a little plus sign here and current game time. Okay. So real quick before we test this out and I show you that it's working, uh, we've created a very, very simple uh, coroutine. Uh, when it's called here in the on enable function, it's going to come to this while loop. It's going to check to see if is running is true. If is running is true, it's going to increment our game time by one. 
and then it's going to check to see if current game time is greater than or equal to our game day length in seconds. If that is true, then our game day is over. Uh, and then we'll just say it's over and what we need to do after that is we need to set current game time equal back to zero Right, so we're restarting our day and then we'll say is day over is false Now coming back to this it, when we increment our game time if it isn't greater than this if this fails if this if statement fails Then we're going to come out and we're going to debug the current game time and then we're going to yield return new wait for one second Right, so we're going to sit here for one second and then we're going to come back and it's going to check again. It says, hey, is running true? Yes, it is. Increment our game time. It's going to run through this if statement, see if it passes or fails. If it fails, it'll run it. Or excuse me, if it passes, it, it will run the set of code. If it fails, it'll increment the time again every one second. So let's jump into Unity and let's see what happens. Um, again, I've, I've included a game time manager here. Uh, looks like it didn't save. Let me exit out of that real quick. And we'll come back in here. And you can see the game length is here in minutes. We don't have any errors or, or exceptions. And so what I'll do is I'll set it to one. And what I actually would like to do is open this back up. And uh, just to make testing purposes a little easier, I'm going to change the 60 to a 10. And I'll make it one minute. Or one, I'll say our game length will be one minute. So it will actually be a game length will only be 10 seconds. But that's just for testing purposes. So again, we have a one set here. I'll press play. And we can see that we're counting time. And when the get when the day ends, we should see it reset. So it should fail. It did. Day is over. And now we have a continuous clock. It's going to go to zero to zero through nine, and we should have a fully working game clock. Uh, without a problem, this lets you change the length. So let's say you wanted 60 minutes. So an hour. Let me control us to save that. Let's go back in. We'll reset this back to 60 seconds. So if you wanted an hour game clock, this now will run for an hour. And we're not sitting in our update function, so we are using less resources and we're not calculating this over and over again. It's just using a coroutine. So this is a basic, simple coroutine uh, that we are going to expand on in the next video. I just wanted to get the basic one up and running for our game clock. In the next video, we're going to explore looking at how to pause and unpause the game clock and then offload some of this into a different method. Uh, and then after that, we're going to be creating an event system. So hopefully you learned something here. Hopefully you can use some coroutines for your own project. And I'll talk to you guys next time.